lift up your right hand. I want you to declare with your mouth. Say my life. My destiny. Will answer. To the anointing. Today. In the name of Jesus. Say one more time. My life. My destiny. Will answer. To the anointing. The anointing. The anointing. This day. This day. In the name of Jesus. Thank you father. So shall it be. In Jesus name we've prayed. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. What the devil fears most. Is a child of God. Who rises up. In power. It's one thing to know you're right. It's another thing to be willing to fight for it. We have, my wife and I have a contract, had a contract with a particular company. That was a legal document. Engaging us for several thousands of dollars to do some work. And we did the thing. And they put it at levels. So at the level, wherever it finishes, that's where they will pay you. And we did it to a certain level and submitted and they verified. Pay now. They refused. We know we could go to court or we knew that. This is maybe over 12 or 10 years now. So it's not really anything anymore. But we didn't. We just left it and said, Lord, we leave them to you. And let it go. We know, we know our rights. But we didn't want to fight for that. But that's in the good side because we left it to God. But some of you know that because Jesus Christ died on the cross, took stripes on his back, you have been redeemed from sickness. Yet you are willing to condone sickness. You are willing to lie down sick and just say, oh God, oh God. You know, in case you didn't know, know now, that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, you have been redeemed from poverty. The Bible says he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13. From the curse of the law. Under the curse is poverty. Poverty is not a blessing. I'm sure you know by now. I've been poor. I've, I've seen poverty. So I know the difference. Poverty is not a blessing. It's a curse. If you check Deuteronomy 28. Read down. You will see that poverty is a curse. Now Christ has redeemed. Not will redeem. Not is about to redeem us. Has. That means it has already happened. You have been redeemed from the curse. But you are not willing to rise up in authority against Satan who is still afflicting you with lack here and there. There is a problem. And it's with you. It's not with God. He's done his part. Will I do my part? I've made up my mind and I've been saying it. I've made up my mind that I'm going to get aggressive about what is mine. Not with the world, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting any human being. But what I know is mine, and Satan is denying me. For example, the Bible says, me and my children, we are for signs and wonders. My children will serve God. Then Satan now says one of them will become a drunk. I say, no, Satan, you can't have this one. You will not have any of them. And I will fight. I will not let him. But that ought to be our mood all the time. And our mode. You engage that mode constantly. You don't. That's why the Bible says be sober, be vigilant. In other words, be alert at all times. Don't have time where you say, well, oh, Satan is okay. Just leave. No, no, no. Because he takes a little inch. He's not going to stop with that inch. If you don't stop him with that inch he's taking, what is he going for next? Mile. Today is anointing service. And... We're just going to share and pray along as we go. So this is like a pray as you go word that I will share briefly. And then we will pray as we go. Praise the Lord. The theme is divine facilitation. This is our month of divine acceleration. To facilitate something means to do what? To make it happen quickly. Like you settle somebody and say, oh boy, facilitate that thing. Make it happen quickly. But there is divine facilitation where God is the one who walks behind the scene to ensure that it happens speedily. You will find that in Genesis chapter 21, then we'll go back to 18. Genesis 21, if you read 1 and 2, 
It says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Genesis 21, 1 and 2. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Some wise person should be saying amen. amen. And Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Amen. This event had been delayed for over 20 years. I decree today, I don't know what it is that has been delayed in your life. What is good that Satan has been holding back in your life. Today, I come to you as a messenger of the Most High God. And I decree that today, that delay ends. In the name of Jesus. I said this very day, mark it, that delay ends. In the name of Jesus. And so this thing had been delayed over 20 years. But a day came. And there was divine facilitation. And that's where I'm going to in Genesis 18. Was where this happened. If you read from verse 1. It says, and the Lord appeared unto him. Him being Abraham. In the plains of Mamre. I like the fact that it says in the plains of Mamre. And one day I was just casually reading this. And the Lord began to explain to me. Plains, think about it. And I began to meditate on the plains. And I realized he didn't appear to him at the mountain of Mamre. It didn't appear to him at Mount Zion or Mount whatever name. At the plains, at the ordinary level. And so that gives somebody hope. Because you may be wondering, those who are always talking about mountain, I'm going to the mountain, to, I'm going to the mountain to do this. The God of the mountain is still the God of the valley. The God that answers you at that mountain is still the God who answers me in my room. So I don't understand the fixation about location. Because God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. If you think he won't answer you in your room, what makes you think he will answer you in the mountain? Then let's go to Mount Everest so that we'll get closer to him. Oh, let's take an aircraft and fly higher if the height is what makes the difference. But it's not. He appeared to Abraham in the plains. You may be thinking, I, don't, I, don't, I hear of people who go to mountains, but Lord, I'm always in the house. Maybe that's why God... No, that's not why. It has nothing to do with that. It's okay to go there if you want to separate yourself, but it doesn't mean God will not answer you in the plains of your room. In the plains of your car. Somebody prayed. My wife and I were listening to the testimony of one Sammy Rodriguez. He prayed in his car. Over the daughter that was about to die in intensive care with COVID. In his car. He said he was driving. Open roof in California. That he said, God, let heaven invade that room. That was his prayer. Simple enough. He said, it was the same day. He received a text message from the daughter. The daughter I see you. He couldn't go to see her. They had locked it. It was during this COVID crisis. And the doctor said, if she doesn't fight, she's not going to make it. So in the car, let heaven invade that room. The doctor sent a message. And in the text message, she said, daddy, heaven invaded this room. The daughter did not know the words that the father prayed. But those were the exact words in text message. The next day, he said they called him from the hospital and said, Mr. Rodriguez, the doctor began by saying, I don't know what happened. Oh, there is somebody here this morning. There is somebody here. They had told you it's not going to happen. They had told you it's too late. The same mouth will say, I don't know what happened. I don't know what changed. I don't know what they said, but I've come to bring you good news. It's going to happen. And they told him, the daughter, I turned around, that please make preparations. He said, preparations for what? They said, make preparations to come and pick her. God can turn around situations. In the plains, in your car, you can pray. In the plain means, you, you probably, he didn't even say he quoted plenty of scriptures. Again, this is where we hold ourselves bondage. I say, oh, I wish I was like Pastor Emeka. I wish I was like Chijuka. I wish I could quote so many scriptures. I wish I... Hey, leave. Biggest prayer, Lord, have mercy. Lord, please help me. Do you need any scripture to quote that one? Lord, please help me. Somebody raise your right hand. Just pray that prayer. Say, Lord, please help me. Take a moment and just pray. Say, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. It's a prayer of surrender. 
It's a prayer of humility. It means I can't help myself. Lord, please help me. Please help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me. Man have failed me. Family has failed. Father, please help me. Friends have shown that I can't rely on them. Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. In the name of Jesus, Father, help me. Help me, oh God. Help me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So in the plains of Mamre. So don't bother yourself with those who say we go to this, we do this. With In the plains. At the ordinary level. Without quoting big, big scriptures. Oh, there's nothing wrong with quoting scriptures. But man, if you can't quote for now, pray the one you can pray. Don't wait till you can quote 20 scriptures before you start praying. I beg you. Pray in the plains. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Again, this is huge. He sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And as I was thinking about this, the Holy Spirit reminded me where he says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Philippians 4 6. This was a man who was believing for a child. He had every reason to be running from pillar to post. He sat down in the heat of the day. It's like saying, I'm sitting in the heat of the battle. But that's the biggest fight. You know, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith is not boom, 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 boom. No. The good fight of faith is Jesus Christ lying down in the boat when the storm was raging. The good fight of faith is Jesus Christ walking towards the tomb of a man who had been four days dead. And he's not crying. He's not shaking at all. Swaggering towards it. Say, roll roll away the stone. That's the good fight of faith. God does his greatest work when you rest. The Bible says, labor therefore to enter into rest. That's a strange thing. Why do I need to labor to enter into rest? Isn't that an oxymoron or what do you call it? It, But the enemy doesn't want you to rest. He will keep troubling you. You are sitting here. You don't know what's happening there. You are sitting here and you know you need one million. You are sitting here and your rent has not been paid. Don't you know you need to do this? And once he can get you into solution frenzy, I call it solution frenzy, where you are running from pillar to post looking for solution yourself. While you are busy running up and down, God is resting. Until you rest, then God walks. And so I was walking up the stairs in the house and the Lord said to me, how, when did I make Eve? When Adam rested. Why don't we learn to rest? Instead of running from pillar to post. Commit it into his hands, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares. Cast it over to him. People will come to you and say, I'm not doing anything. You say, I'm doing something. But you're sitting down. Yeah, that, that's something. It, that's something. To sit down in the midst of battle, that's when you know who's powerful. The way you know an MD is the one who's sitting while everybody's running up and down. That's the way you know the boss. That's the boss. You tell the person, I'm bossing the situation, man. I am bossing the situation. But you're sitting down, man, I'm bossing the situation from here. You boss the situation. So this man sat down. What did his running up and down get him? Ishmael. Got him trouble. Ishmael is still troubling the world till today. That's what is his trouble. So every time you try running around, you create an Ishmael. So take your place of rest. Satan comes, you say, shut up in the name of Jesus. He wants us to run up and down. But I like the fact that where he was positioned, oh, thank you, Lord. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, verse 2, three men stood by him. He was positioned in the place to see his helpers. I call it divine positioning, divine GPS, strategic positioning. That's what it was. If he was inside the house, if he had gone out to look for who will give birth to a son for him, 
Would he have been there to see these three people? He would not have been there. Rise up on your feet. I want you to pray. I believe God for somebody here today. You know, all it takes for a destiny to turn around is right positioning. Did you know that being in Egypt in the prison was right positioning for Joseph? There's no way they would have heard of his skills in interpreting dreams if he remained in Israel. He was in prison. He met the person. It was strategic positioning. I want you to cry out to God. This week, I'm believing God for you. That God will position you. Oh, thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Lord. I remember one day I was traveling and the flight was fully booked. And it was within Nigeria. And they said, the only seats available are in first class. I didn't even know that local flights have first and whatever. I had to call the office because I was working. And at my level, I wasn't supposed to take first class. And I said, the flight's full, I c- no, except for this. And I got approval to enter first class. It cost about two or three times more. But I sat beside somebody. <laughs> I want you to pray. Please lift your right hand. You are going to ask the Lord to strategically position you this week for an encounter unto breakthrough. Lift your voice. Say, Father, 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 I ask today that this very week strategically position me for an encounter unto breakthrough, an encounter unto laughter, an encounter unto celebration in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and cry to the Almighty God. Father, strategically position me. If you have to cancel my own plans, cancel it, O God. But Lord, position me, O God, for an encounter unto laughter, an encounter unto celebration, an encounter unto victory, an encounter unto testimony. In the name of Jesus, position me, O God, strategically, the one who knows the end from the beginning. Lord, position me strategically for an encounter unto victory, an encounter unto celebration, an encounter unto laughter in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, an encounter unto open doors, an encounter unto breakthrough in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, position me, position me, position me, O God, with your own hands for the steps of the just are ordered of the Lord. Order my steps and position me, O God. Reketoso in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Bless you. Please be seated. Strategic positioning. The key to breakthroughs. He was. Esther, strategically positioned. In the house of Mordecai. Where Mordecai was able to hear that there is an opening in the palace. (laughs) Oh Lord, thank you Father. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The opening that you need to enter into your season of celebration, it shall be brought to you. It shall be brought to you. It shall be brought to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse 2, and he lifted up his eyes. And looked, and lo, three men stood by him. I'll stop here. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servants. And then he began to work, to feed them, to bless them. Imagine if he was so fixated on himself, his problems, he would not be able to attend to these people. And I use this to say that we 
children of God, we were meant to be a community. We were meant to be closely knit. We were meant to be united as one. It was meant that his battle was our battle. It was meant that her battle was our battle. It was meant that your battle was our battle. That way, Satan knows that if he touches one, he's in trouble with all of us. But that's not the case. His battle is his battle. Me, I have my own. Everybody has his own. Please, oh, you're your own. O-Y-O is what we say. But it ought not to be so. Thank God Abraham was not too fixated on himself that he didn't look up and see. That okay, these guys, they look like they are hungry. They look like they've been traveling for quite a while. Let me entertain them. He sacrificed that which he had. Summon Sarah. And that's another lesson. Sarah, go and cook. Sarah, make this. I said to myself as I was thinking, if Abraham and Sarah had just quarreled, and they've not been talking like some of us, husband and wives, that we've not been talking for about three days, would he have had the boldness to say, oh yeah, Sarah, go, 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 prepare. Sarah was what, are you talking to me now? Oh, it has reached this point and you're talking to me. You want me to go and cook? Me, cook, in this house. Better tie rapper and enter Abraham. You will cook that, that food, you will cook it. He wouldn't have had the boldness. But obviously, they were like this. That's why he could, Sarah, bear good. There are people here. Help me. And Sarah quickly ran and started preparing. Husbands and wives, ensure, whatever you do, ensure that your quarrels do not last beyond the minute you quarreled. Quarrel and settle it. Quarrel and do what? Oh, will we fight? Oh, yeah. We are from different backgrounds. We are seven in my family. She's like one. She doesn't share towels. I share towels. We almost share toothbrush in the family. So we fight. Because she's not used to it. I'm used to it. There are differences. But don't go to bed without settling it. Because you have opened the door to the devil. And you shut the door to these three that wanted to visit. Hands up on your feet. I, 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 want, you, I want you to pray. This is your prayer point after you are anointed today. Because it's divine facilitation. That by reason of the anointing, Father, I take possession of that which is mine that has long been delayed. You will cry out to God, and I beg you, once you are anointed, activate it in the place of prayer. And cry out to God and say, Father, by reason of your anointing today. Don't look at anybody. I lay hold, I take possession of that which is mine that the enemy has long held back from me. It does not matter. This was a delay of 20-something years. In one visit, the Lord pronounced a word and said, by this time next year. Did it happen? Yes, it did. Will your own happen? I said, will your own happen? When? Next year? Oh, next month. No. Next week. No. When? No. According to your faith, so be it unto you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah.